Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Tuesday. Today, we're going to be doing something for the first time. Uh, we're going to use a website, it's called Gizmos, um, to do sort of an interactive, uh, they're kind of like virtual labs um, activity um, that we use in science uh, quite a bit. You guys just haven't had one yet. Um, this first one we're going to do is about the water cycle. And uh, so it's going to be kind of a review, but I thought that would be a good thing for us to do for our first gizmo activity. So the first thing we need to do with gizmos is you need to create yourself an account. Now, to do this, um, really it's some pretty simple instructions. Now, this document that I have up on the screen is attached to the assignment. So you can just look at that document by clicking on it. And it's really, it's really quite simple. Uh, they even give you steps here. So you're going to go to this website. You should probably just be able to click on it, but it's www.explorelearning.com. In the top right corner, upper right corner, there's going to be a button that says enroll in a class. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, put you into my seventh hour class. Once you've clicked on that button, you need to enter this code. That's my class code for seventh hour 482VLPN7WJ. It doesn't have to be capitalized. You just need to enter that code. You're going to click continue and follow the directions on the site to finish enrolling. I believe what you need to do is there's going to be a green button that you need to enter and you will um, need to create an account because this is your first time using gizmos. You may even wish to put this paper into Notability and write down the username and password that you create. I would recommend that you just make it your school student number and your school password. Uh, just to keep it simple because it's a school website, it's a school login, why not keep it simple? Um, if it says that your school account uh, is already used, if that number is already used, just put your initials at the end of it or something like that. Keep it simple. And then that should create an account for you. And you're just going to log in with that same username and password each time you won't have to enter the class code again. Also, once you have created a code, then I'll be able to look up your password if you do happen to forget what it is. So these instructions, like I said, they are going to be posted with the assignment. Now, once you have gotten into Gizmos, here is what the page is going to look like. Okay, so um, you are in seventh hour. So you're going to get to a page that looks like this. Um, we're going to be doing the water cycle gizmo today. And so you'll just need to launch it. There's a launch button over on the side here. And that's going to bring you into the activity. Now, along with this activity, there is a worksheet packet that we are going to be doing. And that's this guy. Um, these gizmos activities um, are really nice because they, if you have the patience to follow the instructions, they tell you exactly what you need to do. So I'm going to start walking you through this and um, we'll do this together. So Gizmos always starts with a prior knowledge like question. And so uh, in this one, it says the water that comes out of your faucet at home used to be in the ocean. How did the water get from the ocean to your water faucet? And so for these prior knowledge questions, you can, you're going to do this before using the gizmo. So you're just going to use what you already know about the water cycle, um, which hopefully is a little bit because we've been talking about the water cycle um, on and off for a while now. And you're just going to answer that question. The water got to my faucet by, and then you can just fill in your blank there. Next, they always have a warm up. And so for this one, it says, 
water on Earth is always in motion. These motions form a repeating circuit called the water cycle. The water cycle gizmo is going to allow you to explore different paths water takes as it moves from Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back. And now, as I mentioned, these gizmos, they tell you exactly what you need to do. So you can see here at number one, it says click on oceans. What percentage of Earth's water is found in oceans? So if you look back over at the gizmo and move my head again, you'll see on the right hand side, oceans. So if we click on oceans, it gives us a pop up here. The oceans contain 97.25% of Earth's water. And so you would just need to fill that in right here, 97.25 click atmosphere how does the sun cause water to move from the oceans to the atmosphere click on atmosphere here and it gives you a statement that's going to answer that question <clears throat> when liquid water is heated by the sun it evaporates into the atmosphere the atmosphere contains about 13,000 cubic kilometers of water or 2,100 cubic miles about point 0.001%, so that would be one one thousandth of a percent of the total water on the planet. And so you're going to fill that in. It evaporates water into the atmosphere. Number three, click clouds. Click on that button. How do clouds form is the question it asks you. Tells us when saturated air in the atmosphere cools, water vapor condenses into tiny droplets to form clouds. Besides providing a source of precipitation, clouds play an important role in controlling Earth's surface temperatures. So how do they form? Water vapor condenses into tiny droplets to form clouds. So that's going to be your answer. Water vapor condenses into tiny droplets. Next, it says click precip or rain. Precip is short for precipitation or water falling to Earth's surface. What causes it to rain? So we're going to click on that. Do you notice how it's changing the picture over here also? We've added in some rain. So it says when the water droplets in clouds grow large enough, they fall as rain. Over 10 meters of rain falls on Mount, I don't know how to say that, in Hawaii yearly, while annual precipitation in Death Valley, California averages just 3.1 centimeters, which is 1.4 inches. So it's asking what causes it to rain. Water droplets in the clouds grow large enough. And that's going to be your answer there. Then number five, it says click oceans again. Then choose the path tab. Because it has the same beginning and end, the path is a complete cycle. How many steps does this cycle have? So we're gonna click oceans. And then the tab that they're talking about is up on top here. Click that. <clears throat> and the path, it went from oceans it evaporated to the atmosphere condense in the clouds when the drops got big enough it was precipitation and then it fell to the ocean again so how many steps one two three four five steps is what you would fill in here for number five so as you can see it really does lead you step by step through the activity now if you have not already pause this video and make sure you've gotten those answers all filled in before you restart. Welcome back. So we're gonna move on to the second page now. So when you get into the activities, it will always give you some setup instructions if you need to do anything before you start. So it says here for the activity, we're gonna select the simulation tab and click reset. So simulation is over here. And we need to find the reset button. It's probably behind my head. There it is. And now we've got a question. What are the parts of the water cycle? Collect data. 
Create two water cycles using the gizmo. Each cycle should have at least four steps and should begin and end in the same location. Choose any starting point from the list on the right. When the cycle is complete, choose the path tab and write the steps below. So you can choose one of these. Why don't we just start right at the top? We'll start with agriculture. And then we need to choose another one. So we'll go person. From person, should we go up to atmosphere? And it's giving you pieces of information here each time. It does not appear as though you do need to, you need to write this down though. We're just creating a cycle. So we'll click atmosphere and it gives us some information. Then we get clouds. Ooh, we need some snow. And it's going to give us some more choices here. Let's go with soil because we're trying to get back to agriculture. So I'm guessing we should go something related to agriculture. Soil. Aquifer. So if we're looking now, our path is getting quite long. But we need to get to get back to agriculture. So I did a few more clicks um, and I've got quite a list here. So if I was completing this assignment, um, I would need to write down in cycle one this list. But you can choose how your cycle moves. So if you can create a shorter one, uh, please go ahead and do that. It turns out if we had chosen rain up here instead of snow, then agriculture would have been an option for us to get back to where we started. So you're creating a cycle and you're listing this, the path that you're taking for that cycle on the worksheet. For step two, it says, use the information presented in the gizmo to answer the following questions. And so if we go back to our simulation here, and you can reset it, you get the full list again. And so what I would use to uh, find these answers is that list. So the first question says, what percentage of Earth's water can be found in soil? So if you go on this list, find soil, tells you moisture in the soil makes up 0.005% of Earth's water. And so you would simply write that down. Um, you reset it again, or just hit back. You've got that full list. Uh, what percentage of Earth's water is stored in ice and snow? So we've got ice and snow on the list. Click on that, gives you the answer. So you're going to use this list of, inf of items to help you complete these analyzed questions. Okay. And then there is another activity. So we're at step three. So looking at number three here, it says a phase change is a change from one state to another, such as from a liquid to a gas. Based on what you've read in this gizmo, fill in the blanks with the word liquid, gas, or solid to define each change. Now this may be information you already know. Um, if you do, go ahead and fill these in. Um, if you don't, um, these are words that were used in the simulation. And so we're hoping that you have kind of picked up on them as we go. So evaporation, that's gonna be changing from a liquid to a gas, so you'd fill that in. Condensation is going from a gas to a liquid. That's what we should have seen yesterday when we were looking at the cold water in the glass. Melting, you may know this one, is when you go from a solid to a liquid. And freezing is when you go from a liquid to a solid. 
Now number four says, fill in the process that causes each transition. So your choices are evaporation, condensation, melting, and freezing. And so to go from ocean to atmosphere, which of these is going to have to happen? And so some of these you may know on your own. You can just go ahead and fill these in. Uh, but you can also use the gizmo if you're not sure. So if we click on ocean, it's going to give us our little piece of information about oceans. And then we click atmosphere. It says when liquid water is heated by the sun, it evaporates into the atmosphere. So that would be evaporation. You'd write that on the line. Atmosphere to clouds. So we're in the atmosphere. We click on clouds. When saturated air in the atmosphere cools, water vapor condenses into tiny droplets. So that would be condensation. So continue uh, using the gizmo to help you figure those out if you need to. Number five says fill in the two processes that cause each of the following transitions. So to get from ocean to cloud. So from to get from ocean to cloud, you're going to have to do two steps. And so you can use the gizmo to walk your way through it. Uh, maybe you remember just from the previous question. To get from ocean to clouds, we're doing what's in the first two questions on that previous um, number. So ocean to atmosphere, that's going to be evaporation. Atmosphere to clouds is going to be condensation. So you would write evaporation on this first line and condensation on the second one. To get from cloud to glacier, we're using what we wrote down in C and D on the previous question. To get from cloud to snow, it's going to be precipitation. And to get from snow to glacier, You would need to put melting and then freezing. So you've got a series of steps there. Number six says think and discuss. Water covers over two thirds of Earth's surface, yet water shortages are a major problem for many people in the world. Why do you think this is the case? So based on what you have learned about water cycles and what you just know about the world, um, make your best guess about why you think that there are water shortages in many parts of the world. And once you're done with that, you're finished. Uh, please go ahead and turn this packet into Schoology and have a good rest of your day. Uh, remember, you had two days to work on this, so you do not have to do this all today. Tuesday, you have Tuesday and Wednesday to complete this assignment. I hope this was helpful. I know it was kind of a long video. Um, but hopefully it helped. Bye.